Welcome to episode 105 of Let's Talk Geek, recorded on Wednesday, the 15th of August, 2012. In the show, see a 360-degree panoramic view of Mars. That's right, Mars. Spotify alternative Simfy is launching in South Africa with over 18 million songs, they promise. And Flash is dead, on Android anyway. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the show. In the show today, we have me, Jan Vermeulen. Uh, me, Johan Els. <laughs> and me, Tim Hall. <laughs> and uh, mixing it for us, Wikiwa is not the, not mixer. the mixer. Good evening. <laughs> we, can, we are allowed to introduce the mixer tonight. Yes. Hello. The, the mixer is... It's the same one that was here last week because the current mixer is off ill. It happens. Very sad. Yeah, well, but this say, when, the, when the, the real mixer does something, they do it well. So when they get sick... Th they get really they sick. get sick. They excel at it. Yes. Exactly. The random for the show is Tupper's self-referential formula. Gareth, I think you put this in here. What's this about? This one uh, has nothing to do with the, with the show number uh, or anything like that. So what we usually have, um, I found it randomly on Reddit. So not all that randomly. It's in one of the Today I Learns. It's a self-referential formula defined by Jeff Tupper that when graphed in two dimensions can visually reproduce the formula itself. Okay. So well, cool. but, but, but it draws itself. Fed with the right amount of numbers. Yes. There's like this big block of numbers you've got to feed well, into I, the formula. That's just one large number. So the, the, okay, the, number, no the, num the number in the Wikipedia article is let K equal the following. And it is... Four and a half lines of number. <laughs> so it's just, uh, and then, and then yeah. they graph it out, and then you get a bitmap of the function. Sweet. And can you I, can, can I use this that to Wolfram Alpha, and will it draw it? I must test this. We, we should test this, absolutely. Yes. And apparently you can use this to draw a whole bunch of things. Um, so, well, you can use it to draw, I think, anything. Um, you just have to apply it correctly. And I thought this was fascinating. And, and I love maths even though I don't understand it. It's just amazing how it single plots a, a pixel, single yeah. formula. That, that was quite amazing. Yeah. So it would be nice to actually see the flow of the numbers through the formula. How does it actually plot it out? How does it actually build the image? And then I hope there's a reverse to the formula so you don't have to go and randomly punch in numbers until, <laughs> you, <laughs> until you eventually get to so yeah. this image. Yep, yep. All right, so um, that brings us to Johan's random for the show, which actually has something to do with the show date, uh, which is the 15th of August. Ach, once in a blue moon, if I'm bored, I'll actually go look the day up in Wiki, Wikipedia. And today, uh, 25 years ago, if I get my maths right, um, the Big Ear, a radio telescope operator by, uh, operated by Ohio State University as part of the SETI project, receives a radio signal from deep space. The event is named the WOW signal for the no notation made by a volunteer on the project. But more exciting was the fact that uh, somebody added a wiki lookup on the RC channel. So if you, ever, if you haven't ever watched our show live, please join us live in the, wiki, uh, in the RC channel. IRC.LTNet.TV. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just for reference. Yes, it works. And if you actually wiki that quote, uh, it comes up with this reference. And that was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, we've got a bot that uh, looks stuff up for us in the IRC channel that uh, you can play with. A and Jan's even written a... A module, module for it, uh, but, but we'll get to that because I first wanted to, to pick up on, on Johan's random here, which is quite interesting because I also recently read a, a piece, I also think it came from Reddit, um, that it, it might be the same signal, it might not, but essentially, you know, that, that a signal was discovered and, um, you know, that, that there are a lot of people who are considering it as sign of, you know, sign of intelligent life elsewhere in the galaxy. Um, so uh, it's it's definitely going to be interesting to see if uh, I'm just waiting for that Mars photo, <laughs> the of, alien wavy of, of the Martians waving at us. <laughs> yeah, no, it's going to be good. All right, so um, talking about our IRC bot, I did write a module for it, and I haven't told anybody uh, in the IRC channel about it yet. You're, they're going to hear it now for the first time. It uh, in in honor of a random that Tim looked up for us, I think a couple of shows yes. ago. Um, I have written a module for our, for our IRC channel bot that determines whether a number is a happy number 
or not. <laughs> it's a what? A happy Sorry. number. <laughs> we had what that one a few shows ago. What defines a happy or a sad number? So a happy number is a number that you split into its digits, you square the digits, add yes. them together again, then you take the result and you split those digits again, and so on and so forth. So you just repeat that simple process over and over and over again. And if you end up at one, then it's a happy number. It must converge at one, <laughs> then it's a happy number. If it doesn't converge at one, then it's not a happy number. Okay. That's a, that was a random, huh? Yep. Okay. Yeah. No, that's going to Well, and in honor of a previous random. 100 is a happy number. Uh, as is 103, I think, which is the show that... Uh, True, yes, I think it was. There we go. So, that brings us to our events. Uh, recapping some events we mentioned last week is that the South African Disc World Convention is coming up in Cape Town. Um, and I don't have dates. 25th of August. 25th of August. Yes. All right. So what, what, what is this going to be? <clears throat> Just a discussion about the Disc World I'm um, actually on the uh, side. Cons, cons, it depends on the con, but yeah. The, Does like, it depend on the con? <laughs> Thanks, Tim. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the different cons have different, you know, have different things that they can do. So we've got a link in the show notes, um, and uh, it's probably going to be bombed into IRC any second now. And um, that'll tell you what they've got lined up for the, for the convention. So usually there's going to be some cosplaying. Uh, there is probably going to be some stands, and um, maybe there's going to be some gaming. I'm not sure. So, well, they've limited the ticket sales to 150 only. Okay, interesting. So you must get your ticket quickly if you want one. Mm, mm. Then, um, the iWeek registrations open today, I believe. At least that's the the press release went yeah. out today. And uh, iWeek is going to be happening from the 10th to the 14th of September, also in Cape Town, or more accurately, 10 kilometres from the Cape Town City Centre at some fancy schmancy hotel, um, uh, which unfortunately disqualifies me. Yes, so a and us since it's in Cape Town. Normally we stream it, but unfortunately this year, it being in Cape Town, we, it's a bit much. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it places us in a bit of a Look, I mean, position. the last two was in Joburg, so it's only fair that Cape Town gets our week. Oh, I'm not anti that, just some And I, I really hope the Cape Townians is going to support this effort. Because yes. it's, uh, myself and Tim was there the whole of last year. If there are streaming people out there in Cape Town, please go and stream this for us. Uh, we can also help with servers and stuff, so yeah. you know, we, we can We can advise. have with all the infrastructure, you just need your own cameras and cap. Yeah. And, and a and notebook. A <laughs> and a, yeah, and a, a notebook. PC that can handle it, more, more uh, importantly. And, and it needs to be a fairly hefty PC. Yeah, it needs to be a pretty powerful PC. PC. Yeah. It depends what they do. Yeah, no, yeah. They're serious. Give us a call if you want to help, and we, we'll, we'll talk you through it. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things I've just noticed is that if you can't make it and you, you, you're jonesing for something to do the weekend afterwards, the 15th of September is going to be Open Source Day. Oh, cool. Uh, we'll get more details. Uh, we're finalizing everything. But we now have a venue, which is in Ravonia. No, no. You mean Software Freedom Day? We have a potential Soft venue. You mean do? Software Freedom Day? Software Freedom Day, yes. Okay, there we go. But it's also Science Hack. Or what, uh, There's also going to be a Science Hack Day uh, running in conjunction, Ooh. Uh, which is going to be very cool. So the guys are going to be basically in together to hack and this is hardware hack and write programs, not trying to hack servers, <laughs> which we had a query from the one guy to do. It was brilliant. <laughs> but in any case, uh, shame. Um, but it should be, I know the Housefack guy is going to be there uh, involved with both. Uh, we're f involved with it, so it should be pretty cool. Speaking of House for Hack, we haven't actually said anything, even yes. in the previous show. We are streaming from, from our House new for, studio yeah. in House for Hack. Give us an overhead cam shot, uh, Mixer, if you can. Uh, give you guys an idea. We, um, it's a little bit longer. It's the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's longer. It's longer, <laughs> and the lighting's better. Yeah, that was uh, Johan Els's brain, brainy idea. So, yeah, we've got, instead of uh, halogen lights, which also eat power, we're greener, everyone. It's not quite solar yet. That's a hack for a different day. But I'm we're running sure all the rest of worked Something. out uh, before halogen. we were using uh, what's 500 watt times four. four. So we had 2,000 watts. And now they call that a kilowatt. Two kilowatts. <laughs> and now it's 30 watts per bulb. And we also have four. So it's eight times 30. And my maths is <laughs> 240. <laughs> 240. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. So, yeah, we're all green and we don't plant as many trees to offset our carbon footprint and things. And uh, that brings us to the end of the events section. Unless somebody has something else to add, check out <coughs> stardates.co.za 
for your geek events listings. Uh, I don't know so how frequently I'm that gets updated. I'll quite a bit today. Hand. Quite a bit today. Okay, I, I, good. I, I'm just <laughs> laughing at the guys in the uh, IRC that was you playing with your happy number thing, <laughs> where I went, happy space plank. Plank is not a happy number. <laughs> <laughs> so the only one I want to add quickly to the events, if I may, um, if you ever watched Expendables 1, Expendables 2 is starting this Friday in South Africa. Um, that is now um, Sylvester Stallone at his best, so don't expect too much. Lots of bullets and lots of fist fighting around. but And explosions. Lots of explosions. But if you've not seen number one, this is all your action heroes in one movie. You've got Stallone, you've got Bruce Willis, you've got Sylvester Stallone. Is, uh, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger has got a longer role. Last time he just made a cameo. This time apparently he's one of the players. Jet Li, uh, The Rock. There's, there's like this crazy amount of action heroes that's all playing in one movie. It's from starting on Friday. And, and that made it better, hey? No, it's just, it's better than Sorry, Rainbow. No, no. <laughs> I'm joking. It's I better than Rainbow, Rainbow actually. Uh, cool. Cool. That uh, takes us into the show topics. If, uh, if you are just joining us, uh, don't forget to join us in IRC, irc.ltnet.tv. Tim, fix that. So you'll be able to join us in the IRC channel straight from there. Um, if you're a little geekier than that, you can download an IRC client and point that at irc.ltnet.tv. Which I can recommend. It does, <laughs> does improve your experience. Experience significantly, yes. And come and play with our bot. That's, that's geek dirty talk. <laughs> So, anyway, (laughs) yeah, we reviewed the Nexus 7. We did, yes, and by we, I mean Gareth did, yes, all right. Uh, But he also got a delivery yesterday morning, he got a delivery yesterday. So, um, step one is uh, Toby Korean, we've had him on the show um, previously, was kind enough to uh, lend me his Nexus 7 um, unit uh, so that I can review it before I actually got mine because I ordered one. Um, but it takes a while to, to get, you know, to South Africa, um, seeing as I didn't have a friend flying it over, so that, that kind of thing. Uh, so I actually had to go through the mail, and I had to email a bunch of people, and the time difference makes it difficult. But I did eventually get one, and, and here it is. It's all shiny and full of fingerprints because I've been using it. That thing looks really small. It is. <laughs> it does look small, but apparently it's very, Except very it's cool. Except not, it's not really small, but it's small. It's not iPad. Um, it's a seven-inch tablet um, running Tegra 3 um, hardware with a gig of RAM, uh, one 280 by 800 screen uh, screen resolution. It's an IPS panel. Uh, so the hardware is actually pretty decent in this thing. Um, you would have noticed from the back, there's no camera on the back, mm. um, which, I mean, seriously, it's not a big loss. Uh, Again, there is how, one. Who's ever used a camera on their tablet? Some people I know do. Uh, I've seen, and, okay, and so the, I've the camera kids, on the I've iPad. Seen sporting events. Guys running yeah. around with their iPads taking photos. Yeah. And like. But, I mean, for me, it's honestly not a big loss. The one thing that uh, a rear camera is kind of useful for is if you're, um, you know, video chatting with someone and you want to show them what's on the other side of the tablet, then you can usually just click a button and then it switches to the rear camera and then you show them what's on the other side. So you can do that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, I, I know. That's an exception. Yes, exactly. So it's, you know, it's not a critical piece of hardware. So they stripped that out. Um, so question from RC, does it have 3G? No. Okay. Uh, Wi-Fi only. Uh, and there's only a Wi-Fi model. Comes in 8 or 16 gigs of storage. So they skimped a bit on the storage. They skimp on the 3G. And um, you can either go, okay, it's a cost-saving thing with 3G. Or you can say that this way... Uh, carriers can't interfere with updates on the device at all, um, which is, you know, in some cases, it's a, it's a big thing. a massive benefit to the Asus Transformer in South Africa. Uh, well, to the Wi-Fi model. They did get a 3G model of that one Yeah, eventually. but they also didn't go through the operators for that, I think. As, yeah, as far as I know, they yeah. didn't do that. I'm not sure how they got around that one. Um, probably because they didn't offer it on contract. Yeah, which they didn't is, get ranged. Yeah, as, as soon as you offer it on contract, then the carriers start getting involved, and there you go your updates and your update times. Um, suddenly spiking. So you can see the effects of that sort of thing with the Galaxy Nexus on Verizon in the US um, where they have to wait for updates sometimes weeks longer than what the GSM people would uh, would get. It. Um, mm. Yeah, and it's a fairly solid tablet. It's uh, very, very nice. They're offering it at $200, which is a ridiculously low price uh, for awesome hardware, um, decent specs. They haven't skimped too much on it. 
Uh, have you done like some gaming or some some, some gaming? Some of the there? some of the Tegra three games, which run perfectly. That, I mean, that's great. It's a Tegra three, which it's, means it can run that uh, Dark Meadow game that I like so mm-hmm. much. That's a Tegra three. And there's game. some there's Sonic as well for people who like Sonic. I never got into Sonic, but maybe I will now. Uh, and it works really well as you know for for reading and browsing. Uh, so I, is I actually a, started form factor. Hmm? Same Sorry. size as the Kindle, isn't it? More or less. Uh, I think it's a little bit bigger. But it is a little heavier. It's about 100 grams heavier than a Kindle keyboard. So it's, it okay. weighs 350 grams. The Kindle keyboard is about 250. Um, you do notice the difference, but it's actually not that massive a difference. I was using it as uh, my primary e-reader uh, for the week that I had it. And it works really well. So battery life? Battery life was excellent. Uh, video, video looping, it was, I think, 11 hours, which is for that's an Android. I mean, it's yeah, the best good. Android tablet I've tested to date. Um, except maybe for the Asus Transformer with the dock. Okay, but that's not fair. Exactly, really, it's no, not a fair comparison. That, yeah. uh, so battery life was excellent, and, and then it lasts for you know, five working days kind of thing. Okay, so just to come back to the other question, so we're we going to see this thing in South Africa on official channels? Don't or not? know. And well, that's we haven't seen any other, other, other Nexuses. So. We have. We've got the Nexus S on Vodacom, or we got the Nexus S on Vodacom. It just wasn't the Super AMOLED version. It was the SLCD version. We have the Galaxy Nexus also on Vodacom and on Cell C, and you can buy it directly from a Samsung store. The, okay. the only issue with the Galaxy Nexus in South Africa is it is running a South African version of the ROM. So my suggestion with that thing is unlock the bootloader as soon as you get the thing, download the, the official Yakju pack from Google's page, go flash all, and enjoy updates from Google for the rest of your tenure okay. with the Galaxy cool. Nexus. And you can relock the bootloader after that for security purposes. Um, I say do it as soon as you get it because unlocking the bootloader means you flash your phone. So it's going to wipe everything as soon as you unlock the bootloader. Okay. But just do that and then, and then enjoy, enjoy your updates. Yeah. So there's a chance that somebody's going to pick that up and try and sell it. Maybe. Well, at that price, somebody should consider. I mean, Maybe. Look, it is, it's manufactured by ASUS. So there's a possibility that ASUS might bring it into the country. There's always a possibility that Google might bring it into the country, I don't know, somewhere. It is tied pretty closely to the Google Play Store um, in the U.S. So they have play books, play, mu- play movies, uh, play oh, music. But and we have none of kin- those yeah, in South same Africa. Same as the Kindle Fire. Yes, I mean. same as the Kindle Fire. We have none okay. of those except Kindle books. So it was designed to, act, to actually attack to, the Kindle yeah. Fire. Yes, at the two hundred dollar oh. part, so it doesn't actually compete with the iPad directly. It it, it competes with it skewed well, because it's. I mean, it's a smaller this, form factor. But there's rumors about the smaller form factor iPad. That yeah, lots of rumors about. going on there. So, um, well, they've got to do something if they want to. I mean, that, that market. It remains to be seen. Amazon, the iPad is still selling like hotcakes, while the iPhone is not. So it depends. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if if Amazon they Amazon killed it, I mean, they they just unlocked the seven inch market with mm. the Kindle Fire. So they figured out where it should what what you actually need to be doing with a yeah. seven inch market. And I, I think of, I mean, this one just shows there's a lot to be done there. I'm I'm really enjoying it. Uh, with an iPad, I found it's kind of bulky, and with my 10-inch tablet, I've also found that you know, for a, a lot of things that I want to use it for, it's also a little bulky. Um, well, um, and while we're on the topic of tablets, you're also busy reviewing the Galaxy Tab 2, which is a 10.1-inch. Yes. Well, th- you, you what is the point? most amazing feature on that version? Johan is very excited about this one. It has a dialer. People, you can't understand. <laughs> on the tablet itself. Not for making calls. So not not for making calls. Your data usage. And you can load, uh, if you're using airtime. a pay-as-you-go, you can load airtime straight from the device. Cool, but that's true. I mean, we want to <sighs> mention something that I actually found out this way. With Ata, you know, normally, I don't know if you've got some, some cards, you've got data on and you've got to plug it in. And now you need to find how much data is left. But the, actually, the way you do is you put your number in and they send you an SMS with the password to log on the website. Ata, if you're using that to browse with, you click on, you go to their thing, it says, are you using this device right now to view this website? You go, yes. And it says, okay. And it, it validates you off the IP that you're using. And it says, okay, yes, and shows you your, how much bandwidth okay. you Okay, well done, Ata. <laughs> yeah, uh, Sorry, actually, I must say, it's just something that's bugged with everything. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is something phone. interesting because um, that's something I actually came across for the first time today. I, I don't <laughs> use CyberSmart. Um, uh, mainly because I don't think I'm, I'm CyberSmart's target market, um, so they don't have prog- pr- products that, that are really aimed at me. But um, I found out today that CyberSmart does its ADSL balance checks exactly the same way. If you go to their ADSL balance check page, if you're doing it from a CyberSmart IP, they'll automatically validate that and tell you how much data you use. But to get back to the Galaxy, um, so what is the difference between that one and mine? Um, ice cream sandwich. Clean. <laughs> Except that that really? one is clean. Really? 
I honestly did you um, feel there, them? There is a different. Uh, this uh, one seems thinner and lighter. Oh, actually, I already have to, the difference. Seems so small between these two. Um, but I mean, the hardware spec. Uh, the hardware is uh, is different. I'm wrong. Um, no, the size just is about around. the same. Yeah. No, just turn them around. Hold, the hold it up hold to the up. camera. The cameras that the, yeah. uh, that the cameras on the devices are the same place. Okay, so the one so are on the buttons in the same place and that sort of stuff. It's software buttons. Oh, you mean the hardware buttons? Uh, let's have a look. Same shell. Look at on it. the top. Yeah, it's the exact it's same. It's exactly shell. the same um, shell. There it is. On the top is the tab uh, two. It has funny. It has funny tab two looks switchy things. What it looks slightly things? different. It, it's like it's such a coloring. Difference. There's a coloring difference, yeah. and there's like a, like a half and half switch thing there. Oh wait, like. there's one difference. Okay, that, that I can see now. The tab two has a micro SD slot. Cool. Huzzah! Okay. okay. All right. So the uh, original. Okay. The original tab is running Tegra two hardware. Mm -hmm. um, so it's Tegra two and whatever Nvidia um, GPU. This with a gig of RAM. This is running a gig of RAM uh, with. It's a TI OMAP and I think an SGX uh, GPU. So, but it's a dual core processor either way. Mm. Um, decent GPU either way. I, I haven't noticed any kind of huge difference between this and a Tegra 2. And the benchmarks don't reflect very well for the Galaxy 4 for this guy. Um, compared to the, Ace, the original Asus Transformer on Ice Cream Sandwich, the Transformer beats it. Okay. By a thin margin, but it still beats it. Okay. Right. Um, hmm, yeah. And well, then, we'll wait for your review. And it's then also going to my broadband, eh? Yes. And okay. the, the one difference on the front, which yeah, actually is kind of backing, nice, yeah. the speakers on the front over here, on the yeah, side. Front-facing. Yeah, yeah which the is audio kind of this device difference. Is, is, is so... I actually end up, when watching with the kids, to cup the, spe the speakers. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I... Like, when I were with a transformer, it's as well, the, the speakers were at the bottom, which is actually kind of nice, because that's the way you're holding it. So you automatically cup. Yeah. So you don't notice... But um, if it's facing forward, that's facing nice forward, device. yeah, that's very nice. But, but obviously, it's meant to be held in. But face value, landscape. there's no real reason to now go out and replace no. if, my. If you're on a, an original Galaxy Tab, no, no uh, I don't see a reason why. My experience with all these things is you, you, you only need to upgrade them every two years. Mm. Okay? To me, um, this one is going to be two years old. But there's like there's no motivation for me to now. Now compare with what um, uh, the strategy that Apple is throwing at us. When you had the iPad one, you wanted the iPad two. No. Wanted, but you didn't need you it. You didn't need it. Also, you between the two and the three, three, you don't need the three. But as soon as you look at that screen on you the see, iPad three, you're going to go, listen, I want the three. Listen, so the conversation is sitting here. If we were going through this and you had the iPad one and you saw that iPad two, I, you have would, the iPad I want one. it. I'm going, I've got the, t the Galaxy Tab one. This doesn't, it doesn't really have a killer feature. This, this really no yeah, but that, that tells me there's something <laughs> wrong. To me, this feels like a Samsung tax on software. Because it's coming out with ice cream sandwich, and well, remember, we are in South Africa, so we're getting it. Yes, we're getting it a bit late. So this was released a couple of months ago overseas. Cool. Ice cream sandwich is rolling out for the original Galaxy Tab overseas now, and I see you want to move us along there, too. <laughs> so such a good discussion, mate. Come on. <laughs> another I know, another I know. thing I've been geeking out on is keyboards, and uh, what pe is it? people ask themselves <laughs> if if it's possible to geek out on a keyboard, and I say yes. Believe so it. this is a mechanical keyboard. Um, okay, I'll okay, pass it you around. You mean mechanical because no, 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 don't hammer it like that. You have to, you have to type. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it down to, to the uh, microphone for just a second, and just then you can while, while hear he's it. Doing, doing that to explain what a mechanical keyboard is. The old keyboards that were spring loaded and all the rest of this simulated those. Yeah. Um, so I'm <laughs> So this is no, no, the. Queen. Don't mock my mechanical keyboard. But yeah, um, no, 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 it's always showing his age. <laughs> 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 because no. I also remember that. Now, now what's interesting um, about these is that the, these switches are actually fairly, well, fairly new development. So it's not actually that they use old technology necessarily. It simulates old technology. Old technology. But a, a little bit. Um, I mean, the switches aren't that new. I think Cherry MX switches have been around for a while. Um, and so now this is where mechanical keyboards get really interesting. So the, the like ultimate geek keyboard are, is, is seen to be the IBM Model M yes. keyboard, right? And it used a type of switch called a uh, collapsing, a buckling switch. Sorry, there we go. And so it's effectively what it does is you, as you push and hold uh, or, or push, push down on the key, the spring eventually buckles and it... 
Yes, keys, it yes. keys the switch. All right, so now Cherry MX switches are, are a little different uh, to, to that design, and, uh, and they color oh, code nice, them. Though. <laughs> they color code them to to give you an idea cool. to to differentiate between um, you know the different sounds they make. So this keyboard that I bought myself is a Cherry MX Black keyboard. What that means is it's got linear it's got uh, a linear action, but no feedback. So no tactile feedback. Mm -hmm. And tactile feedback is literally like a push against your your finger as it clicks. You've got blue switches as well, and they make like an, a much more louder clicking sound than this one even and they give you like a very tactile clicky noise back okay connection uh usb but with ps2 it if does not have bluetooth no so if you usb if, if it's just usb then you've got like i think a thousand hertz polling or something like that if you plug it in via ps2 you get n key rollover that means that it can register every single key press all at once at okay. the same time um and price uh, this one was 690 bucks from a fairly cheap online retailer in South Africa. Now, this is where things get a little irritating for me because I actually want one with brown switches, and they exist. But no South African distributor that I can find brings them in. I have to import it. Then it costs 1,500 bucks. Ouch. Yeah. So the brown switch is exactly like the black switch, except it gives you a little tactile feedback. And then uh, you've also got clear switches, which aren't that common. And then you've got red switches, which uh, according, go to, overseas again, you can uh, according to overclocker.net, uh, red switches are, are fading out because of not being popular enough. But there's a lot of red switch keyboards being sold in South Africa, also Cooler Master. So this is from the CM Storm range, which is Cooler Master. And Cooler Master also does a, one with a full numpad and stuff. That, and that one in South Africa has a larger variety. I can get a brown keyboard there and I can get a red keyboard there. But this one without the numpad is only available in black and blue. And that's just the Cherry MX switches. You can geek out for this for even longer because there's Alp switches and um, there's also different. Then, then when you're talking about non-mechanical okay, keyboards, uh, there's different different ways of membrane keys. And yes. ask a question I'm not allowed to ask on, on this show. How does it work? How well does it work with Apple? Um, that's exactly why I bought it. So I. So what's the answer? I use a Mac oh. at at work, and so as as you can see, um, I have actually. Swapped around the the control and alt keys, ach the the alt and, and windows keys, so that uh, because that's the the way a, a Mac keyboard layout looks. It's control alt and and, and option. Um, How so do you mean you swapped them out? You li lifted them out. Yeah, they actually give you a key puller with the keyboard, so that you can. Uh, they give you a key puller because you can replace WASD because this is actually a gaming <coughs> keyboard. You can replace WASD with with red keys with direction arrows on them. That's ah. fantastic. Very yeah. cool. <laughs> so it's yeah, actually cool. a gamer keyboard. Um, that's that's how it's marketed, and so they give you a key cap puller. And this also, like, to add more geek to it, like, there's modding for mechanical keyboards. So, the most common mod for a Cherry MX keyboard is you pull the switch and you put a little uh, O-ring over the little plastic connector that attaches to the switch, and then it doesn't bottom out. So, uh, when you listen to it, and I'm going to try and hold it up to the microphone and get to give you an idea. Um, when you when you don't bottom out, it makes this sound. When you bottom out, it's far louder. Okay. That's the plastic hitting the plastic at the bottom. <laughs> Hence, okay. bottoming out. So right, you 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 you've, wait you've wait. You now need to just take the geek one level higher. Yes, and make it a Dvorak. You can totally do that because you can pull the keys. Yeah, but you need to do. <laughs> I can't type on the Dvorak keyboard. Or, or, or you need as to do, you while or, we're or at you it. need to do the one that analyzes your typing, and then actually gives you a keyboard layout. That is pers uh, personalized to you for optimum speed. But that's software. All the, uh, all the times so I mistype there's, there's things. Software, as you're typing, it, and it actually measures what type of words, what, you, what words you use a lot and use it for like a week or two. And then it says, okay, put your keyword into this layout and it will be the fastest uh, typing speed for, for your what the word, type of words you type. So okay. I wrote, wrote, wrote an application to do that. You know, every time I write kind retards and have to correct it at the bottom of an email. I have right. the problem with kind <laughs> regards. Mm. Talking about, you know, I spoke about those photos from Mars. Yes. Have you checked them out? The, uh, Was there aliens in them? No. It's no. How it, much has it, Curiosity moved? Like five meters? I mean, they're going to start driving... 
in but aren't they moving two days. slowly because they're taking samples all the time? So it's not just photos. I mean, so they're going a couple of meters and then they're actually doing site ground samples and stuff. Uh, according to a conversation between Neil deGrasse Tyson and the Curiosity Mars rover, which uh, clearly wasn't the Curiosity Mars <laughs> rover on Twitter, um, he, it moves 1.5 inches per minute or something like that, very slowly. I would guess it's because it's actually analyzing it. It's just doing science. It's got to, got to look. And oh. Anyway, so um, some pictures have come back. If you haven't heard of these, they've been all over the news and we're all very excited about them. And we'll bomb some links into the IRC uh, shortly. And uh, it's, just, it's just amazing. It's everything I thought it would be from playing Doom a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, say that again. <laughs> if you've played Doom and Doom 3... This is exactly what Mars looks like. Or watch the original Total Recall. The original Total Recall takes place on Mars, and it looks exactly like just red. Desert planet that's red. Yeah. Um, Sorry, one thing know. somebody said this is, uh, it hasn't moved at all. Okay. I, uh, this said, I saw an article literally just before I came here saying it's about to move in a day or two. Okay, cool. Uh, so I know it's been a very slow deployment. They've been very cautious about... Well, you don't want to stuff it up. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> the cost of repair... There is no. I <laughs> know. Oh, Sorry. You, you, there, you said another yeah. one. There was some comment on software updates, I think. Yes, um, they, they did do a software update. Yeah, they update. did a software update. They did, uh, so, so imagine. to all those, to, to these phone manufacturers who can't give me a freaking software update, they're doing it on Mars. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I bet you if you pay the amount that these guys did, they would. <laughs> what was it? $2.5 billion. Rand. It's, it's only. Okay, a lot of money. <laughs> yes. To it's do a, a software upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no fear. All right. Yep, yep. All right. So, um, um, in just, local news, no? no, no. Let's just finish it. What somebody's actually done is they've done a 360 degree panorama shot. Oh, this, this isn't from NASA. This person stitched yeah, it so together taken, themselves. So, if you actually take and you go to the website, uh, you can actually move up, down, zoom in and out, do a full look around. So he's taking all the public photos and actually the high quality up. photos. It's oh. very, very good. Okay. That um, good. Look, I don't think if you said it, you said you took the public photos. Um, and you can like look down at, at the rover and look at it. It's actually you can amazing look down, what he's done. You can look up. It is 360. It's like a 360 bubble. It's yeah, a sphere. Course, yeah, it, but you can only get up to a point. Yeah, okay. But it's, you see the rising. Yeah. That's, no, no. It's, it's I, awesome. I was looking at sky. Like I said, I'm waiting for somebody I to I was wait. looking at all. That's all I saw was just sky. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. Cool. Okay. It's brilliant. Well, can you seeing see the sky Earth? on a different planet. <laughs> Hello. Could you look at yourself? No. Because he's not there. No, no. You look up the sky at Earth. Oh. I, I couldn't pinpoint Earth. I'm sorry. I'm not that good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yes. In local news, we have a Spotify alternative coming mm. to South Africa in 12 days. Awesome. Yep. It's called Simfi. Not Simfi. Simfi. Say it correctly, please. Okay. I, phoned, I phoned Germany. They're, they're based in Germany. And I called them and I, hi, I'm calling from South Africa. I see you're launching here. I'd like to get some comment on the Simfi launch. They're like, it's Simfi. <laughs> and please say everything you just said again, speak slowly because I can't understand you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, so, uh, yeah, looks very interesting. Um, Simfi in Germany is partnering with Exact Mobile in South Africa. Okay. And they're launching here. And they are claiming that they're going to bring the full 18 million songs that are in Simfi's library. They're going to bring it to South Africa. Um, yeah, and it runs on your, on your PC in Adobe Air. And yeah. smartphones um, cost sixty rand a month. Okay, that's not too bad. Which is not bad, considering. Uh, uh, and and I said the same thing uh, in the forums. Um, considering stuff like Spotify is five dollars a month for the premium and ten dollars a month for unlimited. And sixty bucks a month and, and, is and not if you bad. Wanna, if you want to have offline mode in on your mobile, you have to pay the ten dollars a month. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, look, I, this I gives have you offline Spotify, mode on your mobile at sixty it's rand. It's costing about a hundred rand a month. Now, but my question is this. Mm. Uh, it, so it does have offline, offline, offline mode, mode yeah. and caching. Yes, yes, but only, I don't know how Spotify works. These guys will only give you three devices for offline mode. If you want to add more devices after that, you have to clear your offline devices by four, whatever. Well, do do, they, give you, do they give you an easy way to clear those devices? Yeah, yeah it's right from the app, okay, um, so cool. and, but you only get two a, two a year. Oh, you can uh, only you clear can, twice a year. Yeah, can only clear, and then you have to start emailing them. And okay, okay. That, that's going to be a problem no, for me, just, yeah. just yeah. as a just reviewer. Check that it might work the same way as Spotify does, because they do remember it, so you can clear it. But generally, if you go on the one app and you say, stop caching everything, then you can do it on another one. Okay, I, mean, I don't know if they're that smart yet, so but just, it'll just be check. interesting to check that. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll check, check that. that. I'm pretty review. sure if I start using this, I'll top it out very quickly. But look, I must say, this is the way to listen to music. 
it's, it's, I use Spotify um, and I've got it on my, my PC and my phone um, and it just works incredibly well. So um, the immediate criticisms that, that came from the My Broadband forums was why would I give up GrooveShark for this? Because GrooveShark has um, HTML5, uh, an HTML5 mobile app yeah. and it also has mobile apps that aren't really official. Um, so for example, the iPhone app, uh, you have to go to the Cydia store. You have to jailbreak your iPhone. Uh, in order to get it's not in the it's not in the proper iPhone store, um, whereas whereas uh, uh, Simfy's is. But you know, be that as it may, GrooveShark gives you essentially the same functionality, just not offline okay, mode. Will you say okay? So offline mode is actually the thing that that works really well. Okay, yeah. uh, if you're at work or or somewhere or driving, you're traveling, you, you you need that offline mode, um, and that's pretty much mine is offline mode. Everything's now cached, um, and that's how I listen to my music. Um, secondly, the, the legality of GrooveShark is is in dispute. In dispute, but let, let's ignore those factors. The library—I don't know what these guys' library, but I know with Spotify, the library compared to GrooveShark is significantly better. Um, I've also found that GrooveShark's my the, my biggest complaint with GrooveShark is because you can always upload what it doesn't have. Yeah, but. Um, uh, that means you still have to get it elsewhere. You can't get it on GrooveShark, right? Um, but you should actually have it before you listen to it on GrooveShark, technically, as well. Um, that's really? GrooveShark, as far as I know, do not pay licenses. I, I speak on the okay. Do now. Do, they, do, they yeah, do now. Was, was okay. that the problem with the legality of, the, of The legality in this country, though. Yeah. They pay yeah. licenses, I think, for America yeah, and, yeah. and England. For, for a couple of regions. Yeah. Okay. okay, but be that as it may, I mean, all that set aside, because the whole regional licensing thing is a is just a thorn in everyone's side. Um, the the library of GrooveShark was just very dirty. The database just seemed very dirty. There were like duplicates of songs and mm. uh, you know and duplicates of whole albums and all kinds of stuff. Um, and I, I remember in one case there was properly. actually the, um, the what was it the version of an album that actually came from the guy's MySpace page or something. Yeah, it was uh, I think it was cleaned, Alestorm. I think they've cleaned up yeah, Black Sails at midnight. Yeah, and, and the, the songs actually had the Yar piracy is a crime but in the song. So and uh, that was uploaded I think they've to cleaned that stuff like, up uh, though. They've got official versions yeah. of songs and stuff. O- originally that that's why they got pulled out of all these channels and stuff because they were pretty much pirating and not paying license fees. Then I know they put a lot of work into trying to clean up. I know they're not quite there. Um, but I don't know. Just my experience of GrooveShark compared to uh, my only experience is Spotify. Spotify works and it's in the background and you don't worry about it with GrooveShark. And then offline mode is the most important thing. Johan, you know, you manage networks and your lines at work and stuff like that. If some guy turns on GrooveShark and starts listening, you, you know, you, you can't. It's going to kill. At those speeds, it, it, A, it, it's going to sound bad and it's going to kill. See, I don't use these services because, unfortunately, I listen to type of music that won't be on these services. Well, it depends because that's, so, the, that's what, one of the other benefits of SimFi is it's going to have South African music on there. I've actually already started searching for South African music and they're already starting to showcase South African okay. music. So if you oh, listen wow. to Jevel, Jevel's Fantastis, they're on there. Oh, it's not um, a groove show if I just check now. Yeah, Fuert Do Not Dance is on there minus their one, their one album, Pantumima. No, Arvin, Arvin Baraklonka, I think, yeah, is not on there. I don't know which label that was on. Hmm. Um, I'll check. I have it at home. I also have it but at home. So that's, that's, that's the reason on. why I just don't consider these services because I unfortunately listen to different music. Oh, yeah, yeah. So and there's some stuff in my library that you will never, hopefully never find online. I mean, so, yeah, that's why I just never use these services. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so so Simfy is hopefully bringing not just streaming music to and South then, Africa but some local flavor as well. And then the other thing, if you really want to listen to streaming uh, um, streaming music, which now does have caching, use YouTube. Uh, have you tried using YouTube's caching? <laughs> I was <hoping. laughs> I actually have. Uh, yeah. And, and do you know it doesn't um, work, but how does it yeah. work w- w- when you've cached the video, right? It's now the you're on the car yeah. train and, yeah, and, and, okay. and you. So, no, YouTube's <laughs> caching sucks. Yeah, okay. It does All not right, work. Okay. But otherwise, yeah, I mean, I actually went, I, I had to go and shoot a video at a. 16-year-old party, don't ask for the details. And the DJ was actually de- mixing when kids were coming up and requesting songs. He was looking for them on YouTube. I kid you not. And he was playing it from there. <laughs> yes, I have this song. <laughs> Play. <laughs> there you go. I mean, uh, it's I, there. I, I, the thing a lot of Afrikaans stuff is there. Yeah, 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 there's, there's, there's 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 about the YouTube caching thing. Have you, have you managed to work out how to tell it one. what to cache? It's, yes, you've got to go into watch. Uh, watch yeah, no, no. Have you done that? And yes. how, how many does it cache? 
I know. Two. <laughs> and it, it comes up and then it tells you, but you're not I using this feature. I'm like, I can't. It doesn't work. I think Tim has been sufficiently yeah, scorned okay. by Google in this. It so just sorry, seems like No, it. it's like, great. It's like a text skull chain. It's like, I have all these tech videos I want to watch. Let me catch them and do all this. Okay, but just to come and back. It right, well. Okay, so I, 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 I didn't know that somebody actually would have tried it, but... <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing how many, uh, even the stuff I listen to is actually also on YouTube. So if you really want to try a service, that's free. <laughs> yes, it doesn't have caching. All right, kill me there. And it kills set, the network And you can set up your own <laughs> custom band, yeah, your own custom uh, playlist. And, and my other question, can you just download the audio component? Yes, you can. But not, not officially. <laughs> but there are, Chrome, no, you can. there are Chrome plugins for that. No, bugger that. Keep not it the app. <laughs> Keep it com. I didn't say that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. okay. So anyway. Yeah. We'll just beep all of that out in the edit. Listen, this one uh, that I put in, I've got to get to this. This is just, have you ever heard about Twitch.tv? No. I'm going to introduce this. Twitch.tv. Take it away, Johan. Have you heard about this? No. So last night, I'm trying to do a uh, video on demand update over satellite. I'm getting a nice two megs per second over satellite, but unfortunately it's still going to run for 45 minutes because the program I'm sending is taking long. So I'm like, it's getting late, I'm looking for something, and somehow I stumble upon Twitch.tv. Mm -hmm. It's a spin-off from Justin TV. They mm -hmm. started this, and their punchline is the world's largest video game broadcast community. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. No, I watch, um, I watch uh, Destiny, <laughs> Destiny StarCraft on there is all the time. So Stuart used to watch a lot of the StarCraft stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I just thought it was. <laughs> I was watching uh, in the. If you're watching the video, in, in the video, this chick in the front, she's playing Legends of League of Legends. League of Hello. Legends. She's actually not bad looking, and she's playing League of Legends. He's got a camera on her, and she's just playing along. There's another guy. Uh, if you go two slides back. N no. Yes. <laughs> no. Go back. No. Any anyway, guys? There's another guy that actually went and he's put his camera on a chroma key. So he doesn't, it's, you don't see this like frame. He's chroma keyed himself into his game and he's playing and he's placed himself nicely next to the, the action bar and they, he's playing away. I mean, Good grief. That means he must have set up his whole gaming rig I don't know. so that he's got a proper chroma. Yes. Uh, or or, or key, he just has a single color background. behind him. Yeah, well, but, yeah, and but, also very well lit single color behind yeah. him. But yeah, in any case, this is very nice. I hope they actually expand this into proper training scenarios where you can use the service to, because this is now high quality. Um, streaming from an, uh, a, a, a desktop, a PC, with a mixing of a webcam, which going into, uh, sorry, webcam with audio and video, going into a website, and you can have, I mean, the one I looked at last night had 23,000 viewers. Well, the way I've heard this, claim, it's sport for geeks. Well, if you think about the technology behind it, you can actually now expand this to do online training easily and that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. And start making money off that. Well, so if Justin TV works on exactly the same technology, then you can just use Justin. Uh, for the, I mean, if Twitch is supposed to be for gaming, mm. as long as it's a, it affords you the same functionality, then yeah, you can just use Justin. But, we'd but have to yeah, check if that you out. ever want to kill a couple of minutes and see how people are playing games, go watch Twitch.tv. And yeah, sorry if, if uh, Stuart was doing this. Okay, yeah. I think you might, I just don't know he mentioned, but uh, look, he mentioned. There you just, can actually uh, see. Think. Um, sorry, there you can see the guy with the There we go. Key. He's creed himself in. I mean, like. Is that wow? Very cool. Uh, he's playing wow, yes. But they, but there's a lot of videos running now because they've got the beta. They're launching the new patch in the not yeah, Do you have it yet? The panda thing. I haven't played wow for a while. I mean, I haven't okay. had time. But so they're actually doing a lot of these guys are actually showing some of the gameplay and whatever. The one chap I was watching last night um, with the 23,000 viewers, he was doing one of the raids in the beta version of the new patch. So the, he had all the viewers going in because he's maxed out and I don't know, mm -hmm. and all his shit on the screen. Some right. comments from IRC before we move on to the next topic. Uh, Fried Roadkill says, uh, it's, it's quite standard. People like to see other people's reactions as they play. Hence the webcam on the face. Okay. I, I enjoyed it. I was actually watching it for quite a while while I was waiting for the transfers to finish. So. Mm -hmm. But in any case, yes. Yeah, sorry. Some more. Uh, you wish to rent. Or rent. No, no, no. no, no, no rent, not sorry. necessarily. This is actually just, uh, just a follow up on a story we, I think we did last week um, where we expressed our concern over a uh, purported leak of confidential information from ICASA to uh, an unnamed industry body. And so what has emerged since then is that the industry body was, in fact, ISPA. Ooh. Telcom named them and ISPA confirmed it. ISPA said, yes, we did send out the document in question. Um, uh, and, and Telcom actually also pointed out exactly the, 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 the right document. Tech Central put the document on their website with an article saying, you know, we, they don't quite understand the accusations being thrown around because this document is public domain. And Telcom said, we never got that. 
Um, so, but now uh, I've actually there, there's there's it's a very it seems like a very messy situation, but I think if you cut right through it, it's fairly simple. Um, so, uh, Telcom never got the document, but the document is just a a written confirmation of what was said during the Complaints and Compliance Committee's ruling. So the Complaints and Compliance Committee just they 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 delivered a verbal. Complaint. A verbal order. No, no, no. Is it, is there was order? there was a complaint from Neotel. Okay, so yeah. to give the I'll give give you the whole background now, but um, the the complaints and compliance committee heard a case between Neotel and Telcom, basically found in Neotel's favour, um, but said that Ecasa had to do a bunch of stuff, and that that essential the the you know that was what was laid out. In the, in the written document. It was nothing that the Complaints and Compliance Committee hadn't said yet um, based okay. on the legal feedback I got from Kathleen Rice, who's a, who's a regulatory lawyer um, at, at Clifford Decker. And, uh, and so uh, she's of the opinion that nobody was prejudiced as a result of the document being distributed. And ISPA said that they really had no way of knowing that this document was, um, was confidential. It wasn't marked as confidential. Um, well, it was it was really just a written confirmation it, it, of what had been said it's anyway. It was also something that was said in a, in a public venue, so which is not confidential. Yeah, it was said in a public venue. There was there were extensive media reports about it. I, I think we've got a report up um, after asking Icasa for comment. Tech Central has a report up. They were actually at the physical event. Um, so um, yeah, it's uh, pulled out of proportion again, perhaps. But I mean, Telcom uh, is the is the one who stands to lose here. So it does make sense for them to try and find a procedural flaw okay. to, undo to try and undo it. Because what Neotel wants, not to give everybody the background I was promising, Neotel wants access to Telcom's local loop, but they want access to Telcom's local loop at very specific, very profitable exchanges oh. under the facilities leasing regulations which already exist. ICASA has already implemented or, or put them in, into mm. effect. Um, and so under there was like a big hoo-ha about this I think last year already when Neotel first laid the complaint. And it's basically, you know, these regulations are uh, you know, a lot of people say that this, this is effectively a form of local loop unbundling that these regulations allow. And so that was part of the findings of the ICASA. I just want to em emphasize that the ICASA Complaints and Compliance Committee is that ICASA has dropped the ball on this by not issuing the local loop unbundling regulations um, on uh, during November 2011 like they were supposed to. And that ICASA have until tomorrow the 16th of August, or the day after the 17th of August. Uh, I'm a bit fuzzy on the date, but if effectively until this week. Um, so if you're watching uh, this re uh, recorded, then it's already happened. Um, and uh, ICASA have until then to get terms and conditions uh, drafted that for, for this uh, facility sharing between Neotel and Telcom that is in line with the regulations in lieu of the... But we're back to the LLU yeah, regulations. No, so, yeah, it's, it's uh, I mean, uh, there's still quite a big stink to come, but I don't think it's necessarily going to be about a, con a breach of confidentiality. Yeah. No, so, um, the councillor, William Stuckey, who has done so much uh, already uh, to, to, I think, change the, the perception of ICASA as a toothless regulator into something a little more fierce, uh, you know, doesn't seem to be in the wrong on yeah. this one, which, which is, is good. good news. It's good. Sorry, I must apologize. I saw your name next to the article near the end. And I thought, rent. <laughs> 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 must be, must be. Um, and uh, that brings us back to some mobile news. Don't cringe yet. Flash is dead, uh, at least on Android. Cool. Uh, who, who put that, that was in? me. Uh, was that you, I, I can see everybody who's talking about it and it's been coming up. Yeah, yeah. Um, Adobe is going to be pulling Flash from all the... From uh, the Google Play Store. Google Play Store. Um, so if you have it on, it's not going to be removed. Uh, but, and you'll still get security updates, they said. Okay, that, that I don't know, but you won't be able to install Flash directly. I'm sure there'll be an APK if you really want to find it. Uh, what somebody says is quite amusing is you've got Samsung handing out, uh, at the Olympics, handing out all these phones without Flash on it, um, which the media stream that have to watch in England on the phones, the only way to watch it is with Flash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fortunately, the Olympics are over. Mm -hmm. um, but if you think about it, um, I do actually have a problem with this. And, and the main problem is what's the, the alternative method to watch these things with? What, what, what's the alternative method to stream 
correctly and decently to Android devices. Apple has one. Oh, Android devices. I wanted to say Silverlight, but... uh, (coughs) Android devices. Yeah. So, um, yeah, because HTML5 doesn't allow streaming. Yeah. No, Uh, it's okay for recorded video. There is RTSP, which is the older versions. Theoretically, if you look at the documentation, it does say Android does do the Apple one. It doesn't. I've tested. Okay. Um, (laughs) Quite a bit. Yeah. Um, So the only way to do it is really with your own app. You're going to have to have some sort of RTSP app wrapper to do this. Yeah. Nah, it's just going to force people... Because right now it's easy just to use Flash. Okay, so it's going to force Android to put something in, correct? Oh, but Which Android we will have to then wait for the next update to get Android Android already does, get that update. Android already re- uh, supports in the player directly or, is, or, uh, or Yes, okay, so it, it supports that. So if I go to a website and yeah, I... Yeah, so that, I mean, we've all be bitching that, that some websites shouldn't have Flash on them. No, th- uh, what, what I mean, no, I'm just saying there are legitimate times and, and video streaming is the one place. But, and the way they're doing general, it is wrong. Really? I mean, if Adobe had half a cent, put it in the store for 10 cents, 10 American cents. It's, it's, but it's not, I don't think it's a money issue. I think it's a support issue. Yeah. Um, uh, they just don't want to... Well, I mean, when you start getting that sort of monies, the support issue well, can go well, away. Well, maybe. Maybe they just don't want to commit I mean, resources to it anymore. The, the thing is, Adobe has said that they're going to stop development for mobile Flash. I think this is a little bit of a wake-up call. Um, There's a lot of products the, the, that should the, get a wake-up The only up people call. who really use Flash on mobiles is, is Android. And uh, like that's, that's in wide use is Android and BlackBerry. Um, and BlackBerry not on their phones, I think. They, it's on the playbook, so it's not in that wide use. So it's on Android. Mm. So by ripping it out of Android, it's, it's a massive wake-up call that, listen, we should not be depending on mobile flash to get things done. No, no, yeah. But look, now what do we do? I, look, I do, I do agree. For, for all the other rest of it, HTML5 covers a large percentage of it, except for audio in, in browsers. Um, just they're taking tools away and they're making me use an app. Yeah, yeah, and they they once again making me go into a closed ecosystem instead of using the browser to use all these tools. True, sure. um, but so I mean, if Android has a standard way of handling RTSP, okay, so it's not quite it it doesn't work as well. Yes, sure, it's it's not an Android. Technically, it's not quite as seamless. I can't remember what the problems was. I think I had to make it go full screen, so you lose all the, a lot of your player controls. You can't embed it inside the website. Well, you definitely um, can't embed it. You'll have to launch it in the I don't think this plane. is a negative. Uh, no, no, look. Okay, Adobe's my, my, my approach is wrong. Complaint is maybe Android, go and sort out a decent streaming <laughs> mechanism or damn well go support Apple's one because everybody uses it. It actually works no, pretty Now it's well. going to be forced. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So as long as the market is not going to start actually saying, well, we need to do something. And yes, a lot of the websites that only do Flash websites now will not work on a mobile. Yeah. Or just the mobile must natively support the new uh, Adobe HTTP streaming mechanisms. We go. So um, give it some time. No, no, it could happen. I'm a it's just more for, I mean, for me it irritates. We us. thought that, 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 that the move that Apple dropped Flash was going to change the market. It didn't. Hmm. Now the Android is dropping Flash. Now let's see what happens. But yeah. I mean, it's a lot of products from, from Adobe which I just don't agree with. Um, but I'm not yet to bash Adobe tonight. We'll keep yeah. it for another night. <laughs> my, 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 my one thing is everybody's saying here is HTML5 does support streaming. Uh, you know, you, you can do all that. True on pre-recorded videos. This is live streaming. I'm, I'm mm. saying it. there are issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. HTML5 has no solution for live streaming. Yet. Well, and HTML5 is also a bit of a moving target as yet. The, so. the, there's nothing in the pipeline. <laughs> for, for live streaming uh, that, that, and that's yet. even worse considering okay, that cool. HTML5 is a moving anyway, target yes. so uh, an, another cool thing that's come up is sent to Kindle uh, uh, was that you Tim? once again me um, yeah. basically I don't know if anybody's used Chrome to phone um, mm-hmm. this is something very similar it's a plug in for <coughs> Chrome that you can store officially <coughs> from uh, Amazon um, basically then you can send a website to your Kindle uh, it also reformats it uh, for the Kindle to in the correct format um, and it's just quite nice. You know, it's just a nice way to send things through. Mm. Uh, I, like I have some comments on yeah, that one. Yes. Which, which um, it's not to, uh, a service that hasn't been offered before. Uh, it's been offered by third parties as well. So there's one called centerreader.com, uh, um, which so I actually wrote an Android app for. Yes. Yeah. Um, called Droid Reader. It's in the Android market. You can go download it. Fantastic. Uh, just try it. There's get my the, plug. Get the downloads up. Yeah. It's free. Fine. It's free. Um, and it does exactly that. You make a center reader account. You link it in with your, um, uh, your, your, your Kindle email address. 
Um, so it's not quite as seamless as what this Amazon one would be. With this one, I'm assuming you just kind of log in with your Amazon account and off you go. Yeah. Uh, with with other services, it's it? a little no. bit of a little bit hacky. Mm. Um, well, it's not. I mean, it's it's as seamless as Amazon allows it to be. Yes. Um, but every Kindle has an email address attached to it, and that's what it sends to. It also goes through the reformatting thing, so it formats nicely for your Kindle. Uh, and then it downloads over free over Wi-Fi, and you can actually force it uh, to send and, and to only download over Wi-Fi because every email address has an alias uh, that gets used so that things only download over Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, so it's not, not brand new, but Hold it's on. new from Amazon. You also got to remember, just quickly, because mm. we are running out of time. Um, I just noticed they are also tracking our Instagram, our Insta paper and pocket. That's well, that's because what they're trying you, to keep up with. Because you can also load the Kindle app on a tablet. Yes, or and you can send it directly to that as well. Yes. So yeah, it's 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 not just for. Just don't think it's not only just for a Kindle. Yes. It could also be for the Kindle app on other devices. Yeah. But I don't think you don't get the email address if you don't have a physical Kindle. That's the only catch. Uh, yeah. And, gotta, with have a the, and, and I think with Send to Reader, it also doesn't allow you to send it directly to your Android Android your uh, Apple device or whatever, um, to that app specifically. You send it to your account, and then it actually goes into your archive. So you can then go into your archive in the app and download it from there. Okay. Um, so as, as normal with your books, which means for me, my archive is pretty messy at the moment. Um, I'm yeah, sorry. No. I still love Pocket. <laughs> yeah, same. Uh, uh, still enjoy Pocket. Very good book manager. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's a good temporary bookmark manager. It's a very good bookmark manager. So you put something in I, there. I, I use you can go through a reading the list. Bookmark manager. <laughs> exactly. No. I pack it as a for, bookmark manager. For I'm permanent cool. things, yes, bookmarks. For something that you just need temporary pocket works. And it also synchronizes it onto my phone. I'm, I'm old yes. school. I still use Delicious. I don't know how many of you even remember Whoa. Delicious. <laughs> and deliciously on that point. <laughs> Man. Into the kicker. Yeah, me using delicious and a mechanical so, keyboard. Sorry, I must just say, while you guys were doing it, I quickly signed up for the thing. I've told it where to deliver it. I, you can choose free Wi-Fi or WhisperNet. Mm. Yes. You can choose which devices it must send to. But do you own a, a Kindle? Yes. Okay. I, I have two underneath my name, actually. No, no but, but I mean... No, this, uh, you, can, you can also send it to your Android, uh, all of them. This yeah, is anti-competitive. They should, they should allow Send to Reader the same access to the API. I demand... Maybe they do. <laughs> um, I'll go check it because I actually don't have a Kindle registered on my uh, – because I don't have a Kindle. My wife's got one. I just want to see because your, your email address only activates if you've got a physical Kindle. So you only get those services when you've got a, a registered Kindle. That's what I'm saying. So you might have those options because you've got a Kindle. So I'll check with No, but that Kindle. email right, that you get only works for that Kindle. You can't send it to, with that email address to your, your phone or your iPad. Yeah. Your and you get a set, you get a different email address for per every device. Kindle, per device. Uh, okay, I'm with you. All right. Cool. So <laughs> taking us into our kicker, Disney uh, researchers use electrical charge to create virtual textures. That was me, and that's exactly what they're doing. Just read that again slowly. Disney Just Disney re researchers are um, using a, a relatively new technology that they call Revel to add virtual textures to everyday objects. So um, what, what they have, and the, the thing that they kind of show in the demo video is they have a physical, like a teapot, and they have a tablet, and then they do an, an AR, so uh, uh, not, not an AR, um, no, it is, augmented reality uh, over the teapot, and then you can sort of see the texture that they're trying to put on the teapot. They put a different texture on it, and then when you touch it, you actually feel that texture. And they can do this for all sorts of surfaces. Um, it is kind of freaky. And I want to play with it. Because mm. you can do this <coughs> with, with so many Disney. cool things. It's Disney researchers, yeah. What are they going to do with it? I have no idea. Maybe so, for their like, I, I picture books. Just want to put some breaking news in quickly. Uh, there's a new Humble Bundle for Android. Sweet. Cool. Buying it immediately. Buy all the things. That's a great thing to put in the kicker because <laughs> the Humble Bundle is fantastic. Yeah, they are awesome. Yep. With that, I'd like to thank you for joining us uh, for our show and for watching it on YouTube or from our site and liking us on Facebook preemptively 
circling us on Google Plus. Or, or following listening us on to the RSS. You can also download us on your phone or iPod or whatever. Like and, a proper podcast. Yeah. <laughs> like, a, like, a, like a podcast should be. Um, I'm Jan Vermeulen. You can find me at Jan VZA on Twitter. Uh, sometimes, though I spend most of my time writing for mybroadband.co.za, so most of my stuff's there. Tim, where can people find you? Uh, on Let's Talk Network, so YouTube. Uh, Everywhere uh, where Let's Talk uh, Network is. Wiki.altinet.tv and from there, wonder. Everywhere. Great. Johan, where can people find you? Mostly at work at the moment, but otherwise, <laughs> www.who-else.co.za. Work Go interferes with all, all the geekery. At the moment, it's just ridiculous. But we'll live. Yep. Gerrit, where can people find you? Uh, About.me slash hockey ZA. And that'll point you to wherever you need to go. Uh, Twitter, Google+, Plus, it's all over there. Hmm. We'll see you next time. And don't forget to check out our other shows. And gratuitously like and plus one and face Twitch share buzzer us. And yes. follow. Yeah, all that stuff. And things. Thank you very much. Thanks. Cool.